Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to the weekend. Welcome to Friday, the 16th of December, 2022, week right before Christmas, to Peace Through the Word, a daily devotional ministry of Peace in the Valley Lutheran Church and LCMS Congregation from Benson, Arizona in the United States of America. And I'm Pastor Ron York of that congregation. And it is so good to be able to be with you this morning as we begin the weekend again, <laughs> okay? So, so good to be able to be with you this morning. Trusting that you're having a good day, uh, no matter where you're chiming in from this morning. So, my brothers and sisters, we're going to be talking on the subject of heaven and hell this morning. <laughs> uh, you know, I'm not sure those two subjects get a lot of attention. Maybe they do. But I don't hear it so much as a as a as a rule. Uh, I just don't. Uh, maybe you do. Uh, I don't know. But and so my assessment is it doesn't get talked about that much. And I think one of the reasons tends not to make us feel real good. You know, it does. It's not one of those messages that uh, people want to really gravitate to. But brothers and sisters, we need to. Because we have some very serious uh, situations uh, that uh, are, are with us. And if we don't become serious with this, we're going to be perhaps, uh, well, not perhaps, if we're not uh, doing due diligence, we will be occupants of hell. And that's not a good thing. All right. So I need to talk, we need to talk about these things uh, from. In, in light of the gospel of Jesus Christ, all right? And so I pray that it's going to bless us tremendously as we come together in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. So as I always want to do, I want to begin our time together with prayer, and so allow me to please pray. Dear Lord, we ask that you please stir up your power and come and help us by your might that the sins which weigh us down may be quickly lifted by your grace and mercy. For you live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. So my brothers and sisters, uh, I'm going to share with you the setting this morning of Responsive Prayer 2, and pray that will bless us as well. So, O Lord, open our lips, and our mouths will declare your praise. Make haste, O God, to deliver us, Make haste to help us, O Lord. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. So, my brothers and sisters, the passage of Scripture dealing with the subject of heaven and hell is that of Isaiah chapter 32, verse 16. And again, we are at the final days of the church year of Advent, where we look to the first coming of our Lord in the past, but more importantly, to his second coming, where he comes as judge. He's not coming as the baby in the manger and, 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 and dispelling grace and mercy. When he comes again, the time of grace is no more. And that is very close on the horizon. So that's why we have to take this subject, heaven and hell, very seriously. Because the time of our Lord's return is near. Okay, so in Isaiah chapter 32, verse 16, we have this recording. Then justice will dwell in the wilderness and righteousness abide in the fruitful field. Well, what is this all talking about? You know, what is this? So allow our devotional to unpack this passage for us this morning. One of the reasons that it is hard for the imagination to capture the realities of heaven and hell is because no human language can quite describe it. See, that's the problem. We can't really describe what both of those uh, areas are. And so that's why it's so difficult to really grasp this. The best the Lord can do for the prophet is inspire him to describe the afterlife by means of analogy. The wilderness, the wicked, will be ruled by justice in hell. 
and the fruitful field, the faithful, by righteousness in heaven. So we who know God's grace do tend to worry about the fate of the wicked. Do they really deserve to be tortured forever? It means it doesn't end. How bad will the torture be? And is there any possibility that they might get out if they repent? Good questions. Entitled to good answers. So St. John teaches us that they will be scorched, scorched by the fierce heat and that they will continually curse the name of God. They will not repent and give him glory. Revelation 16, 9. Those who curse God's name in this life will not suddenly cease to blaspheme him in the next. Yet those who are saved by faith in Christ, that means we're just just trusting in Jesus. Jesus, everything that Jesus does in Scripture is not for him, it is for us. He repents for us, he lives the perfect life for us, he takes our sins upon himself, and he pays the penalty for those sins by willingly going to the cross for us, and then he rises from the dead for us, so that because he lives, we live also. And then he gives us his righteousness, his perfectness, his holiness. He just transfers that to us and takes our sins and put them on him. And the only thing he asks us to do is simply trust him. Just trust that. That's it. So that those who are saved by faith in Christ will rejoice in this life because they are certain of the promise of salvation through Christ Jesus. They look forward to the world to come in the inheritance of all that is due to the children of the Heavenly Father, even as they endure the wilderness which is the wicked, the sins, until that time. So right now we're sinner and saint at the same time. And there's that constant tension. And that's why it's so important for us to be in worship and word and sacrament ministry every week so that you get God's word and you get his sacraments, the forgiveness of sins every week. Because the only means that God deals, the only way he deals with humanity is through word and sacrament ministry, not word or sacrament ministry. In other words, you don't have to believe in the sacramental ministry. Oh, yes, you do. Oh, yes, you do. And if you don't, you're putting yourselves at at risk because you're despising God's means of grace. Okay. Jesus instituted his Holy Supper for what purpose? For the forgiveness of sins. You know, when he consecrated the bread and the wine as his body and blood in, with, and under the bread and wine, after he did that, he said these words, the peace of the Lord be with you. That's not a greeting. That's a theological fact, meaning Now there's no more hostility between God and man. Why? Because he just gave you forgiveness of sins in the sacrament. If there was still sins, there would be hostility there. But he said, it's for forgiveness of sins. So now there's no more hostility. Yet we've got denominational, Christian denominations that don't believe in the sacramental ministry of Holy Communion and Holy Baptism for the forgiveness of sins. I can name the churches. I used to be a part of them, (laughs) which is why I can do that. That's not good. That's not good. So that needs to change. That needs to be repented of and putting your faith and trust in Jesus, which consists of his means of grace, word and sacrament ministry. Okay? So allow me to pray. Dear Heavenly Father, please grant us such faith in your goodness that we may trust in your word fully. For you live and reign with the Son and the Holy Spirit, one God, 
now and forever. Amen. Pray that will bless you this morning and by the power of the Holy Spirit, transform your life as well this morning. So this is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. O Lord, have mercy. O Christ, have mercy. O Lord, have mercy. So brothers and sisters, taught by our Lord and trusting in his promises, we are bold to pray the prayer our Lord taught us, the Lord's Prayer, and so together we pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. And brothers and sisters, this morning we want to profess the Christian faith and we use the words of the Apostles' Creed, so together we profess. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven, and he sits at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. So hear our prayer, O Lord, let our cries come to you. In the day of our troubles, we call upon you, for you answer us. Hide your face from our sins and blot out all our iniquities. Create in us a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within us. Cast us not away from your presence and take not your Holy Spirit from us. Restore to us the joy of your salvation and uphold us with a willing spirit because your steadfast love is better than life and our lips will praise you. For you have been our help and in the shadow of your wings we will sing for joy. Teach us your way, O Lord, that we may walk in your truths and unite our hearts to fear your name. We give thanks to you, O Lord our God, with our whole heart and we will glorify your name forever. May all who seek you rejoice and be glad in you, and may those <clears throat> who love your salvation say evermore, God is great. Save your people and bless your heritage. Be their shepherd and carry them forever. Give ear, O Lord, to our prayer, and then listen to our pleas for grace. Let us pray. We thank you, our Heavenly Father, through Jesus Christ, your dear Son, that you have kept us this night from all harm and danger. And we pray that you would keep us this day also from sin and every evil, that all of our doings in life may please you. For into your hands we commend ourselves, our bodies and souls and all things. Let your holy angels be with us, that the evil foe may have no power over us. Amen. So let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Brothers and sisters, the Lord bless us, defend us from all evil, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Well, my brothers and sisters, again, thank you so much for chiming in this morning, wherever you may be worldwide, to this devotional piece of ministry, Peace to the Word. We thank you immensely, and we uh, cherish your partnership in it as well. Beautiful day here in southern Arizona, and uh, the flaps and wheels have been retracted. I convey to each and every one of you tremendous blue skies.